Hi, I'm Thomas Miller, the narrator of many of Fred Dodson's audiobooks. In fact, at the end of this video, we'll put a list up of all of the audiobooks, but I wanted to welcome you into my Aspen, Colorado studio, where for most of the day today, I've been working on completing the latest audiobook, which is called Increase Your Energy. But I wanted to just tell you a little bit about this particular location. This is a studio, this is a room actually, not a studio, it's a room as you can tell, in a home that I actually manifested some time ago when I set the intention that I was going to move from Texas to a place that I've always wanted to live, Colorado. And not only did I get an amazing place at an amazing price, but lo and behold, it had a built-in perfect room where I could record my audiobooks. I had a studio back in Dallas that we built several years ago that cost probably over $50,000. And I have to tell you, from a sound quality standpoint, this room sounds as good as, if not better, than that expensive studio in Dallas. And the energy in this room is far better to be recording these audiobooks for you. Now, I wanted to play you an excerpt from one of Fred's books. This is from Reality Creation and Manifestation. I would imagine that Fred would say that of all of the topics that his coaching students and people writing in from his website, realitycreation.org, etc., ask is how can I manifest this or that? And usually it's about money, uh, a home, a car, or love. Well, I happen to have all of them. So here's an excerpt from Reality, Creation, and Manifestation, where Fred talks about manifesting a house, a car, and love. Enjoy. Manifesting a house, car, and partner. If you wish to attract a new house by mind alone, you're going to have to get away from the idea that manifesting a parking space or a dime is easier than manifesting a house. In the eyes of infinity, there's no difference. Enter the image of your perfect house in your imagination. Walk around the house, feel it, touch it, smell it. Let go of trying to get it. Let go of your wants. Enjoy the house. Let go of resenting your current living space. Be at peace. Focus even more on the state of consciousness the type of person you are when you own that house, not only the thing itself. Later, throughout your days and weeks, dress and behave like someone already living in that house. Follow the leads you get. Request leads from the universe. Be open for miracles. Just because your life was a certain way for ten years does not mean it has to be this way today. Say, universe? Thank you for giving me a lead today. And then watch what happens. Did you think this stuff is more complicated? Most of you don't actually believe you can manifest a house with your mind alone, do you? Well, I believe so. But in case you don't, you could at least trust that intensely visualizing a house will help you stay tuned to that goal and even attract beneficial circumstances as if by luck. People always say to me, Fred, you're so lucky. If only they knew that I have to visualize like crazy for my, quote, luck. Reality doesn't happen to you, it happens through you. Many years ago, there was a woman called Sandra who was in love with me. She wanted to manifest a house through visualization. But every time I met with her, the house hadn't manifested yet. She had read books of mine, done all the techniques, had visualized up a storm, sent prayer, acted as if she is moving, gone to see many different houses, but still, she didn't find the house she liked. Neither could she afford one. I started getting tired of her continued pleas for a new house. So one day I asked her, do you believe that it will come true? She assured me she did. I asked her a few more times that day. She always assured me that she believed in her vision 100%. Do you believe it will come true soon? Again, she assured me that it will manifest soon, that she holds no doubt whatsoever. Now, knowing that she was madly in love with me, I then used a trick. I said to her, The next time you see me will be in your new house. 
She didn't understand at first, so I became more specific. You will not see me again unless you get that new house. What? she exclaimed. You can't be serious. Why not? I'm hoping it will inspire you to manifest more quickly, I responded. I reaffirmed my new stance throughout the day, and shortly thereafter she said to me, Please, you can't do this to me. I'll really miss you. That puts me under too much pressure. I said, What's the problem? I thought you believed that your house will manifest soon. In that instant, she realized that she didn't really believe. Deep down, she did not believe in its manifestation. She kept telling herself and others that she did believe, but it wasn't so. It's now a decade later, and she does live in that house. A good friend of mine manifested his car through visualization. I didn't. I just went out and bought my car. However, he wanted a specific light blue old-timer that was not really available and that would have been very costly had he gotten it through normal channels. The first thing he did was to go out and buy a toy model of the car to demonstrate his intention to the universe. Then he visualized the car once a week with 100% faith. He insisted that it was his and that it was on its way. After a while, he forgot about the whole thing. I noticed because he quit mentioning it and his toy model was collecting dust. Then one day, it must have been a year later, he met a man who was an old-time car dealer. It was totally out of the blue and totally unexpected. My friend immediately felt zinged and intuitively knowing that this was the path to his new car. He immediately agreed to visit the guy's car yard, and there it was, exactly as he had envisioned it. I have no idea what got into the seller, but my friend got it for $1,500 instead of the 20000 that could have been asked for it. I knew that's what could have been asked for it, but my friend didn't know that was the expected price. Because he was naive, he did not believe in the limitation and he got his car. For some, manifesting a car doesn't take a year, it takes a week. I recall how a student of mine visualized a car every day, and a week later, her daughter just bought her the car as a gift, without knowing that mommy was imagining it. In order to get what you like, you don't necessarily need money. Focusing exclusively on money is a limitation. The belief that your car can only come through money is wrong. Goods can come from anywhere and at any time. What about manifesting a partner? Romantic love is a sign of higher consciousness. It means someone views a relationship to another as something spiritual, something deeper, something more mysterious than mere chemical reactions. Romantic love does not see the other person as a mere tool for sex or someone to marry for the sake of convention but as the spiritual being they really are. One of the reasons a soul wants to come to earth is in order to have such an experience. A soul is born with almost complete amnesia of its existence as a soul, and finding a soul mate provides a moment of remembrance of that higher realm. And because like attracts like, you won't find the ideal partner by neediness or longing. That's the part that popular music and movies get wrong. The often sung, I need you so, is a recipe for loneliness. The secret is to love yourself, not in the narcissistic sense, but in the self-valuing sense. In loving yourself, you become less dependent on others' love. That makes you more attractive in the true sense of the word, because once you love yourself, you begin attracting love from all over the place. If you are truly content with yourself, then it's easy for you to love others. And in loving others and being kind and considerate, your energy field expands even more. To all who are running around wanting love, give love first. Be love. The mirror does not smile before you smile. This energy called love is the number one solution to everything. It's the all-in-one package deal. Any problem that is happening is happening because somewhere there is a lack of love, lack of care, attention, kindness. When you love, you turn enemies into assets. You turn problems into resources. 
you can turn crises into jumping ramps. In the process, clean up your place, clothes, and act as if you are expecting a new partner to enter your life. Also, get out of your house so that you can meet people. But these are side effects of feeling love. If you feel love, you tidy up naturally. You can't radiate one type of energy at one part of the day and expect another type of energy to flow back to you at another part of the day. The universe is holographic. The way you go about little things is the way you go about big things and vice versa. Therefore, loving the shop clerk or driver in front of you or the way you wash your dishes has everything to do with whether you will attract your soulmate or not. Here's a partner manifesting technique. Write a letter describing yourself to your new partner. Ten minutes. Now write a letter from your partner describing themselves to you. Another ten minutes. Then visualize your preferred reality as if it were already real. Again for about ten minutes. I recently read a newspaper story titled Woman Paints Man Meets Man Marries Man. It was a story about a woman who, without expectation but much love, focused her attention in detail on the reality she'd prefer, and then she let go. Painting a picture is a more intense form of visualization of many hours because it comes with no emotional attachments or desperation, but rather a playfulness and joy of visualizing just for the fun of it, not to make something come true, then reality manifestation occurs. The same happened to me once while I was conducting a seminar on the island of Majorca. Just for fun, I started the intention that I would like my teeth to be whiter. Drinking a lot of tea has given my teeth a yellowish taint, so I stated, my teeth are strong and white. I did so without much expectation. My teeth don't really bother me, so there was no attachment, neediness, or impatience involved. Thus, I quickly forgot about the statement. On the same day, a few hours later, I went up to purchase bananas for the group. At the time, I had no idea that the bananas would turn out to be connected to my intention. Later in the evening, I browsed online and a pop-up came into my screen. It said something like, make your teeth whiter with bananas. Puzzled, I clicked on the pop-up. I'd never heard of making one's teeth whiter with bananas. The article said that if I cleaned my teeth with the inside of a banana peel every day, they would become whiter. This idea was new to me, but I started doing it. A week later, I could see the results. This is how the universe manifests in mysterious and unexpected ways. When manifesting in this manner, it's pointless to define from where and how and when something will manifest. You define what you wish, and then you let go, as if the subject is complete, just like me with the bananas, just like the woman with the painting. Yeah, you know, it's that letting go part, or that forgetting about it part, that can stop our manifestation right in its tracks. It's also called resistance. This is such an amazing volume. Fred has accumulated all of his written materials on manifestation, except two things, Parallel Universes of Self and Reality Creation Technique, which are their own separate books and audiobooks. But everything else that he's written over the years about manifestation are combined in this one volume. You know, there's so many questions about and talk about The Secret, The Law of Attraction, etc. And Fred discusses the movie The Secret in this volume in a way that I think you'll find interesting. You'll have to pick it up to find out. Also, all of Fred's books are available on Amazon.com. And all of the audiobooks are available on Audible and iTunes. In fact, here is a complete list of all of the audiobooks that I've recorded for Fred. And I think you will find each of them unique and beneficial in their own way. Thank you for watching and for listening.